Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geek Limit Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how we can fade objects in and out of our applications. Now, how we do this is by simply adjusting the alpha value of our objects. We're gonna be creating a nice animation effect where it adjusts the alpha over a set period of time, creating a nice fade effect. We're also gonna talk about how we can manually control the alpha by using UI sliders to adjust the transparency, and then go on to detect when our objects have been faded in and out. So let's jump straight into it. Okay then, so fading objects is a very simple method to do. Very much like our past tutorials on hiding objects and enabling objects, all we're really doing is adjusting a certain attribute of an object to equal a value. Now, to fade objects in or out, or just to fade them in generally, we need to adjust the alpha property and equal it to a number. Uh, the highest number being one, which is full transparent, and zero, which is complete see-through. We cannot see it at all. Now, fading and revealing these objects in many ways doesn't remove it from the view. It just makes the object see-through. That's simply all it does. So we're going to demonstrate how to fade objects in many ways. So I already got my project set up. It's a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named it Faded Objects for the purpose of this tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do then is jump into our main storyboard. We're going to select our view here and change it to an iPhone size. There we go. So we can do this in many ways. We're first going to have the ability to fade an object in and out by using simple buttons. So we press a button, it will fade the object out. Press another button, it will fade it in. Just so we can understand the process we've got to go through to fade an object in and out. Now, unlike hiding and enabling objects, there's a slight different method to fading in and out. Yes, we just get the alpha property and yes, we make it equal a certain value, but that just changes it within the blink of the eye. That will just make it seem like we're hiding and revealing it. The whole point of fading in and out is to create a smooth transition. So we're gonna be working with a small animation. We're then gonna go on to using a simple UI slider where we can precisely choose how transparent we want our objects before we go on to then learning more about how we can detect what the current value of our fade of the object is. Okay, so we're gonna keep it nice and simple to start with and we're gonna work with how to fade an object in and out. So we're gonna have two buttons. Now these two buttons, like I said before, are simply gonna be the trigger to again fade an object in and out. So I'll call this fade in, and I'll copy and paste it there. And our second one will be our fade out. And what we're gonna fade out is we're gonna use a label. We'll use a few objects so we can see the different kind of types of animations on it. We use a label, we're gonna use a segment control. Again, we'll make that a little bit wider. There we go, I'll space them a bit further down there away from our buttons, and let's say we're gonna use a simple UI switch. So we fade in, it will bring all these objects into view, fade out, it will then kind of fade them out. Now they're still on the screen, they haven't disappeared, we can still interact with them, don't forget that, it's just we're making them see-through. So for example, if I selected the um, switch here, now we do have an alpha attribute within the attribute inspector. Now it's set to one, which is its full transparency there, I can then, start to make it go down and you can see that switch slowly start to disappear. Now we're gonna create a nice animation effect to make it go from one to zero, which will completely fade out the object, which is gonna look really cool. We can add some nice transitions within our applications. So then we're gonna bring up our assistant editor where we're gonna add in our action and the outlets for all of these objects. So let's start with our two buttons then. We're gonna create two new actions and I simply call this fade in. There we go. And then our second one, which is fade out. Again, making sure that's an action. Connect that up. Then we're gonna go for our label, which I'll simply call label. Our segment control, which I'll call segment. And our switch, I can't call it switch because it kind of uh, messes up when we come to coding because there's actual coding terms called switch. So I simply call this our switch 
outlet just for that purpose there. And there we go and add that in. So I'll close the assistant editor now and go back to our standard editor. We got all the actions and outlets we need just for this moment while we learn how to fade in and out an object. And we're going to jump into our view controller dot swift. So I space out our two buttons. There we go. So to fade in and fade out, we're going to work with our fading in to start with. Uh, we have to create a simple animation kind of effect. So we need to get our UI view and then create an animation duration. And then within that animation duration, we then configure what we want to animate within that duration period of time. So we get our UI view dot animate with duration and then a time interval. And we're going to do this over one second. And animations here, we're going to create our curly bracket and then press enter. So when we press our fade in button, it animates or creates an animation duration within our view. So within that one second period, whatever we place within these two curly brackets is going to happen. So if we set our label dot alpha, which is the attribute we're going to be working with to equal one, it will make our labels alpha equal one over the space of one second, which creates if the alpha is set to zero to start with, will create that fade in effect. It takes longer to perform that task. And because it's placed within the two curly brackets of this whole animation duration, we need to select it to itself. So don't forget, uh, we don't need to miss that out there. And then because we've got the other objects as well, we'll do self dot our segment dot alpha to also equal one, and then self dot switch outlet dot alpha to also equal one. So that will perform again over the duration of one second, and that's going to fade it all in. Now to do the fade out is the exact same. So we just paste it in, and all we're going to do is change the value it equals. So by setting it to zero, that means the value is going to be completely transparent. We can completely see through the object. And again, that will take place over the space of one second on our fade out. So that's all it's doing. It's just changing the value, but it's changing it with an animated duration of one second. So again, it takes one second to complete those tasks. So if we go to build and run now, let's select the uh, iPhone simulator there, and we can see exactly how our objects fade in and how they fade out. Again, so once it's loaded up, again, we can simply uh, use these objects. We can mess around with them, and then we can choose to fade out. So once we press fade out, you can now see that they then set the alpha to zero, but it animates over one second, which creates that slow fade out which is a pretty cool effect. I've used this in many of the applications I've created, and it's a nice kind of animation, kind of visual effect uh, for our users to see. We can then choose to fade it back in, and again, it happens over the duration of one second. Fade out, and fade in. So you can actually play around with the settings, maybe you wanna fade it over a longer period of time, fade it over a shorter period of time, um, maybe not fade it all the way out, and or create kind of, um, pulsations, it fades in, fades out, fades in, fades out, effects, pretty cool things you can do with it. But that's simply how you can adjust the alpha of a button. Now we're going to talk about how we can precisely control it. Maybe you want to do something very similar to how you change the brightness on your screen. Again, that's kind of like almost fade in, fade out, but it doesn't let you fade all the way down to zero. And how we do that is with UI sliders. So back within our main dot storyboard, we're now going to add in a UI slider, which we could manually control the alpha being faded in and faded out of these objects. It's going to be pretty simple. So what I need to do is make sure that as by default, the alpha set to one on our slider, make the current value of it equal one. And I have a maximum of one and a minimum of zero as they're the kind of values between our alpha transparency. So now I need to create an actual action uh, for our slider and an outlet. So we start with our outlet, which I'll call it slider. That's so we can reference it and kind of use the value of the slider to change the transparency. Then I'll create an action for it. And I simply call it alpha slider and create that in again making sure that the value of the event was value changed back to our standard editor 
and then back into our view controller.swift. So if I space it out just down below so we can clearly see what we are doing, space out our slider button here. So what we want this to do then is again change the alpha value of our objects. Now, because we're using like this slider as a real time um, kind of adjust of the attribute, we don't need to animate it at all. All we're going to do, and again, we're not using these within the two curly brackets now, so we don't have to do, call it as a self. We just get our label dot alpha to equal. Now, we need to equal this to a CG float because we've been working with a different value of our slider dot value and then end that with a bracket. So the alpha transparency I have the label now is gonna equal whatever the value of the slider is. So if we slide it all the way down to the bottom, which means the value is then zero, that equals to our labels alpha. Now again, if I just simply copy that, paste it in, so we got three, so I can change it to our segment and then to our switch outlet. So if you go to build and run now, you can see how we can manually adjust and control the transparency from a simple slider. Now you can see now it's built and run. Again, it's one by default, the transparency, and so is the slider. As I start to drag down, you can then see the objects start to fade out. And I can bring them back in and then fade them all the way out. So we can now manually adjust the alpha. And we're not animating it this time because it's updating in real time. It's updating every time the value of our slider changes, which is pretty much instantly. You see how cool that is. So maybe you want your users to do kind of things like how you can adjust like the volume in the application or the actual brightness of the screen. You can do that in many things within the application itself by using a simple slider to control a particular value of an object. So that's all pretty cool then. So now we're going to talk about then how we can detect if the alpha is completely faded out, how we can detect if the objects are not being shown on the screen no more, if they're in, and we can even display the current value of the alpha of our objects using our UI slider. So we're going to jump back into our main.storyboard and we're going to add in a new button. There we go. And I'll space it out. Now I'll call it detect me. And in the label, we're going to use this then to dis display it. So I'll center that and then create a new action and outlet by bringing up our assistant editor. So we're going to drag and drop in our label first. So let's scroll to the top there so we can see. Now it's going to be a new label. We already called our label, first one label. So we call this one label two. And then this button. We'll simply name it as an action and we call this detect me. There we go. Add that in. Close our assistant editor, back to our standard editor, then jump into our view controller.swift. So what this button's gonna do then, if I now space it out, we're gonna create an if statement. And we're gonna detect when the value of the slider reaches to the top or the bottom, whatever one you're gonna do. So what we're gonna do then is create if, and we'll go, we'll base it all off our label. Our label dot alpha is equal equal, let's say to zero, so it's completely see through and no longer there. Then it's gonna get our label two dot text to equal the objects have gone. Simple like that. So only if the transparency of our label has equaled zero and all the other objects are working off the same kind of uh, system. Uh, if it equals that, then we can simply say in our label to all the objects of gone. Else, now else means if anything else other than the labels alpha equaling zero, which means 0 0.1, 0 0.2, all the way up to one. Else, we're going to get our label to dot text to equal our string here of the alpha is backslash two brackets here, and then place in our slider dot value. And what's that doing then? Only if the labeled alpha equals zero, we can say the objects are gone. Else, everything else after that, our text is gonna display the alpha is and whatever the value of our slider is. So we can then actually see uh, what the current state is and we can detect it. So when we go to build and run now, 
you can then see exactly how it works. So these are the simple little small additions you can add to your application. Uh, maybe you don't want to add them at all, but it's just nice to understand and nice to know how we can get information from other objects and basically get stuff to happen. So we can fade out, we can fade in, we can adjust, and then we can detect. So if I pull it down to zero, it's initially going to say the objects have gone. But when I bring it up a bit more, let's say around about just under halfway, detect, the alpha is 0.40099. And if we go all the way to 100%, the alpha is 1.0. So you can see how it detects now, and then zero, the objects have gone. So we're detecting what the current state is, and we're performing actions on it, and we can now display the current value of the alpha of the objects, as well as fading in and fading out and adjusting it. It's pretty cool. And there we have it. We can now have nice animated fading effects on our objects. We can even also detect when an object has been faded in and out, which gives us an extra dimension when it comes to detecting and controlling the objects within our applications. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Hey guys, just before you go, I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial and if you did enjoy it, make sure you click that big like button down below. And if you'd like to further your knowledge and progress within iOS 9, Xcode 7 for Swift 2 and Objective-C, where you can learn how to create 20 real life applications, links for these will be below in the description of the video. And if you'd like to learn iOS development on the go, then make sure you check out one of our many iOS applications where you can learn how to create applications again within Objective-C and Swift. The links for these will also be in the description down below. And I'd just like to say one last time, if you did enjoy this video and it did help you out in any way, make sure you hit the big like button down below on the video and make sure you check out our website, geeklemma.com, where you can find a full source code for this tutorial and all the others we offer. And make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so you can keep up to date with what's coming here at Geeklemma. So once more, let's thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.